has it really been 11 months since my last update? I've even got people asking me if I've abandoned the project. This must be how George R.R. R. Martin feels. Don't worry, this project will never be abandoned. It will, however, take a very long time for me to make any progress. Luckily, I do have some progress to share with you in devlog number four. So, I know that the first section of the game, which will probably serve as the in-game tutorial, is going to take place in one of the houses. So, I modelled the house and then added textures with Substance 3D Painter using the same method as I shared in Devlog 2. Just as a side note though, when working on this asset I discovered the Substance 3D Community assets and I was able to find and download pretty much all of the materials I used on the house model. Definitely worth checking out this resource if you use Substance 3D Painter in your workflow. I added the house to the level and I think it looks suitably spooky. Next, I needed a way to attract the player's attention to this house, so I used the emissive channel to add a light on in the upstairs window. This didn't look spooky enough for me though, so I added some bloom using the post-process volume that I already had set up in the level, and this gives a more horror-esque look in my opinion. I then decided to move on to something completely unrelated, and decided I'd make a low-poly tree for the level. There are obviously lots of different methods I could have used for this, but I decided I would use it as an excuse to take a look at a piece of software that I learned about years ago, but I've never used. The software is called Treeit, and it's used for generating trees. I installed it and quickly learned that it doesn't work on Windows 11 straight away, but luckily a helpful soul on Reddit pointed me in the direction of some other stuff I needed to install to get it up and running. Let me know if you'd like a quick tutorial on how I got it working. Once I'd finally got it open, I then realised that I had no idea how to use it, so I watched a couple of YouTube tutorial videos from Ryan Laley and especially Prismatica Dev, and then I was able to create my first tree. It did originally have way too many triangles for my use case, so I first tried lowering this within Unreal Engine, which did not work at all, and then I found the imposter tool in Treeit and use this to take the tree and turn it into a billboard or imposter version which only costs 8 triangles in total. I then lowered the texture resolution and number of colours, as with my other assets, and imported it into UE5. I think it looks pretty good as it is, but if I decide I want a slightly more detailed tree in future I can always generate some more. Anyways, I sprayed the tree around the level using the foliage tool, and now the grassy areas look a little more eerie as the player explores them. I'm sure there'll be a dark secret lurking in the woods as I make further progress with the game. The final bit of progress I have to share with you in this update is quite boring, but the method I discovered to create it will really help speed up development. I'm going to need walls and hedges to break up the environment and to also control the speed at which the player can progress through the game. I was originally planning to create modular walls and hedges of different sizes to take care of all of this, but then I discovered the modelling tools in Unreal Engine. This allows me to quickly draw out paths directly in the level, and then turn these into meshes. I haven't tested out how well they're UV mapped, and I might even choose to recreate them later in development, but for now, these are fine for what I need. I modified a copy of my master material to work with world align textures, so that I can resize and modify these meshes however I want, and the textures will still be properly applied. This is what I've used for the wall that encloses the community, and I plan on adding hedges when I find more time to work on this project again. Anyway, I think that's everything I have to share with you for now. Thanks for watching and for following this devlog series if you have been. I don't know what I'm going to work on or implement next, so please let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or requests. Thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members for the support, and hopefully I'll see you all in another devlog in the not too distant future.